what if you wanted to solve the equation x factorial equals 100? Obviously, you can just plug it into Wolfram Alpha and get an answer immediately. But what if you wanted to solve it algebraically? What would you do then? Well, this is where you have to apply Stirling's approximation. Stirling's approximation is a way you can approximate factorials like this. If we use this method, we won't get an exact answer, but we'll get a pretty close answer, actually. However, we can't plug in 100 into this x over here. Rather, what we have to do is we have to set x factorial equal to y, so we have a y equals type of equation, find the inverse, and then plug in 100 into wherever y is in the picture. Basically, we're going to take the inverse of Stirling's approximation in order to get an answer, or a very close answer rather, to this equation, x factorial equal, equal to 100, and many similar equations like these. However, we're not actually going to use this equation specifically. Rather, we're going to use this version of Stirling's approximation. x plus 1 half divided by e all to the power of x plus 1 half times the square root of 2 times pi. Now you might be wondering why we're going to use this version instead of this one. Well, with this version, it's going to be a lot easier to calculate certain values. And also, we can see why this right here is very similar to x factorial using a limit. As we can see from Wolfram Alpha, if we take our approximation equation, x plus 0.5 divided by e all to the power of x plus 0.5 times the square root of 2 times pi, and we divide by x factorial, and we take the limit as x approaches infinity, we get 1. Now what does that mean? Well, what that means is that this approximation equation gets closer and closer to x factorial as x gets bigger and bigger. And once x approaches infinity, these two uh, expressions are basically the same, which is why when one gets divided by the other, it equals one. So now that we have that out of the way, let's start solving for y. Well, first of all, we actually have to add a y into this equation. Okay, so I wrote the exact same equation, but instead of an x factorial, I wrote a y. Now we can start solving for x. So the first thing we can do that's pretty obvious is just divide both sides by the square root of 2 pi. But what seems to be really annoying here is this x plus 1 half in the exponent here. We want to take this out. And the way we can do that is by applying the logarithm on both sides, or rather, the natural log on both sides. Remember that when you take the logarithm of something, the exponent of that something can come out of the logarithm itself. So what I did now was that I divide e on both sides. Now why did I do that? Well on this left hand side it just looks like a jumbled mess, but what we're really looking for is this right hand side. Remember, we want x to be by itself by the end of this whole thing. And when we see this, we see an x plus 1 half divided by e over here, and an x plus 1 half divided by e inside this logarithm over here. These two terms seem pretty similar, and what that means is that we can use the Lambert w function to try to get x by itself. Now what is the Lambert w function? If we say that the Lambert w function of some expression a is w of a, like this, then we can say w of a times e to the power of w of that a is equal to a. So we can use this form on here in this example to get a, or in this case x, by itself. Now how do we do that? Well first we have to find a good expression on this right hand side that can be written as that expression times e to the power of that expression. And we can actually say that that expression is the natural log of x plus 1 half divided by e. Now I'll show you why that's the case. We can rewrite x plus 1 half divided by e as e to the power of ln of x plus 1 half divided by e. That's because this e and this ln, this natural log, will just cancel out with each other. And then you'll just be left with x plus 1 half divided by e. However, when we write it in this way, we can see this is exactly the form that we want, which means we can apply the Lambert w function. So let's take the Lambert w function on both sides. We get the Lambert w function of 1 divided by e times the natural log of y divided by 2 pi on the left hand side, but then on the right hand side, it simplifies down all the way to the natural log of x plus 1 half divided by e. Again, that's what the Lambert w function does. If you get an expression in this form, some a times e to the power of that a, then if you apply the Lambert w function on it, a is what gets outputted out. In this case, that a was ln of x plus 1 half divided by e. And now what we can do 
is that we can take e to the power of both sides in order to get rid of this ln over here, this natural log. Because remember, e to the power of some ln of a is just equal to that a. So if we do that on the right hand side, we'll just get x plus 1 half divided by e, as shown over here. On the left hand side, you'll get kind of a mess. So instead of writing e to the power of this whole mess right here, we'll write exp of this whole thing. So I just wrote over here, e to the power of something is equal to exp of that something. It's just an easier way to write it. And we can also rewrite this over here as 1 divided by e times the natural log of y divided by 2 times pi, all divided by the Lambert w function of that same 1 divided by e times the natural log of y divided by 2 times pi. Now how can we go from here to here? Well, if we look back all the way over here, remember, some uh, function times e to the power of that function just equals a in this case. Well, we can rearrange this to get e to the power of some w of a is equal to a divided by that w of a. Previously, we've had this, this e to the power of w of a. We had e to the power of the Lambert w function of 1 divided by e times the natural log of y divided by 2 times pi. So, in this case, we can just write it as that a, which is 1 divided by e times the natural log of y divided by 2 times pi, divided by w of a, the Lambert function of a. So the Lambert function of 1 divided by e times the ln, the natural log of y divided by 2 times pi. And I guess one reason we do this is because if we multiply by e on both sides, we can get rid of this e right here and this e over here. And therefore, after subtracting 1 half on both sides, we get x is equal to the natural log of y divided by 2 times pi all divided by the Lambert W function of 1 divided by e times the natural log of y divided by 2 times pi minus 1 half. And therefore, we can say that if we wanted to solve x factorial equals 100, we just plug this 100 into this y over here and this y over here, and we should get a close enough answer to x. So let's try plugging in some values. So I plugged in our derived equation into Wolfram Alpha over here. As you can notice, instead of writing in the Lambert W function, in Wolfram Alpha, if you want the Lambert W function, you write in product log over here. But anyway, let's test out a couple numbers. So instead of y over here, let's test out 100. So let's, we're going to write in 100 there and here. Let's enter that in. And it turns out that we get an answer of about 4.88794. If we plug in x factorial equals 100 in Wolfram Alpha, we'll get an answer of 4.89251. So it's actually pretty similar, similar as you can see, this approximation formula, 4.887, 4.892. And if we want to find the percent error in our approximation, we can just take our observed value and subtract it from our expected value, take the absolute value, and then divide it by, again, our expected value, and then multiply 100 by 100 to get a percentage, and we see that there's a 0.09% error in our approximation, which is pretty small. Let's try a larger value now. So instead of 100, let's go for a million. Let's uh, enter it into Wolfram Alpha, and we get an answer of 9.443786. If we type in x factorial equals 1 million into Wolfram Alpha, we'll get an answer of, nine, of about 9.4456089. And again, once we put that into our percent error equation here, with 9.4437861 as our observed value, and 9.445608 as our expected value, and then multiplying, by, multiplying it by 100 to get a percentage, we see that there's an even less percentage error here than there was for x factorial equals 100. We have a percent error of 0.019%. And with that, we are done.